we're now going to be looking at a suspensive sale agreement. So what is a suspensive sale agreement? It's probably the first step, just to make sure everybody's on the same page. A suspensive sale agreement is a situation, for example, that we quite often see when it comes to buying a new motor cars, motor vehicles. So for example, let's say you go to Nissan and Nissan says, and you go to Nissan and you buy a new vehicle. I can't even think of a car, but let's just call it Car X as, a, uh, as one of their models. And they tell you that you can buy it and pay it off over five years and you pay um, 5,000 rands per month, for example. After the end of the five years, you take ownership, it becomes your property in full. That's a suspense of sale agreement. Now this can happen obviously for any type of asset. It's basically the I sell it, but the sale is suspended, so it hasn't completely gone through, um, and it hasn't been completely set until everything has been paid. Okay, but how does it work for tax purposes? So, for VAT implications, this is the first thing I want to talk about, VAT. This is usually an installment credit agreement again for Section 1 of the VAT Act if it meets the requirements of that definition. And if it is an installment credit agreement, please remember we have the following rules. The value and the timing rule, the value rule says it's on the cash value of the supply and the delivery um, or the timing is the early of delivery or payment. Now, again, let's quickly use this vehicle as an example. So if you go and buy this Nissan now, the total pay that you will pay is you'll pay 5,000 rands a month times 12 months per year times 5 years. Right, that's 300,000. But now if you go and look, if you go into the dealership and if you had to buy this car in cash, they would charge you the following. The cash cost X VAT is, let's say, 200,000. So the VAT on that would be 15%. And then the difference, so I want you to see there. So if you had gone into the store, the shop, you would have paid 250 or 230,000 for this. But you are paying 300,000 in total because you're paying 5,000 rands a month for five years. So if you had gone into the, into the dealership, you would have paid this amount over here, this 230,000 rands. But why are you paying 300,000 instead of 230,000 rands? It's because of that 70,000, and that 70,000 are finance charges. Now these finance charges, you calculate in terms of section 24J. Basically what section 24J does is this is what you've learned for a number of years. It basically tells you to calculate it using a yield to maturity method. So if I had to show you yield to maturity, this is an amortization table. The interest that you calculate here, that is section 24J. And this is the interest that you guys learn how to calculate whenever you do financial accounting and you do leases in there or management accounting, any of those ones. It works in exactly the same way. You can calculate it with your financial calculator. So, let's look at it. Now that you've seen that little bit of an overview, let's go into a little bit more detail. So, if you look at the income tax implications, we've got the seller now and the buyer, not a less on less see, because it's an actual sale. Now, when the seller sells this asset, so day one when they sell the asset, that disposal of the asset, you will treat according to the normal rules. So if it's trading stock, it's gross income for the seller. And if it's capital, if it's capital asset, you'll have to calculate the recoupment and CDT if it has been used. The buyer, on the other hand, becomes the owner of the asset. So the buyer can claim capital allowances. The seller, those finance, those interest calculated in terms of the amortization table, that will be gross income for the seller and it will be a deduction under Section 24J for the buyer. Right, so let's take a look at this. So let's look at example three. 
A limited is a registered VAT vendor with a 30 September yen. X limited is also a VAT vendor with a 30 September yen. They're not connected. A limited acquired a new manufacturing machine, Machine F, on the 1st July at a cost of 2.3 million rands. So you can see there what the cost X VAT is and the VAT. And they brought it into use immediately in the process of manufacture. On the 1st of October 20X6, A limited sold this machine to X limited. And I just made a comment here just to make it clear for this example. A limited did not use this machine at all during the 20X7 year. Right. The 1st of October is in case the first day of the tax year. A limited offered machine F to X limited at a cost of 2 million and 70,000, which is 1.8 million rands plus VAT of 270,000. X Limited did not have the necessary funds available and entered into an agreement with A Limited where we would pay three installments on the 1st of October 20X7, 20X8, and 20X9, respectively. So if we are entering into this in the year 1 October 20X6, and the first one is payable 1 October 20X7, it means it's payable in arrears. If X Limited fails to make payment, A Limited can repossess Machine F. Machine F was delivered to X Limited on the 1st of October. And the amortization table below was determined using a yield to maturity of 17.8660 And you can calculate that yourself also with your financial calculator. So I'll put it in for now. N is 3. Present value, guys, is the amount including VAT. You pay, it's, a, it's the full outstanding amount. Payment equals 950,000, and then we can calculate I. Right, and you'll see it gives you that amount. So then, guys, based on that, you can calculate the interest and the capital, exactly like you've learned before. So you can use the function on your calculator, P1, P2, or you can say 2,070,000 times that percentage. Right, times that. That will give you 369826.86, which is equal to that amount there. And then you deduct your payment, 950, get the total there, that total, times I, etc. I'm not going to go into detail with that now, because this is not what this lecture is for. That is how you calculate it, the interest on a, in terms of, um, in a, on a yield to maturity method, in an amortization table. It's also covered in more detail in section 24J. Okay, but now, let's get into the detail. So, the required now ask us, is this an installment credit agreement? So if we go through it, in terms of Section 1 of the VAT Act, an installment credit agreement is an agreement whereby goods which are movable or machinery or plant which are movable or immovable, right, are sale, put under a sale. There's also one for a, a lease, obviously. But this is what we're looking at in this case is a sale. If the goods are sold by the seller to the purchaser against payment to the, by the purchaser of a stated determinable sum of money, at the stated determinable future date. So in this case, so basically what they're asking you is, is this person, in this case the buyer now, paying amounts over a certain period of time? And do we know what those amounts are? We do. There's 950,000 rands, three annual installments. That money must include finance charges, right? It does, the question tells us, but also let's do it as follows. So in this case, I want you just to understand the total payment made is 950,000 times 3 so that gives us 2850 and that can be broken down into three components again it can be broken down into the cost x vat or the value x vat the vat and the finance charges we always start basically with the cost, x VAT, and that's the cash cost. They tell you here, it's 1.8 million and plus VAT of 270. So 1.8 million 
plus a VAT of 270,000. So that gives us Two million and seventy thousand, and the difference between two million and seventy thousand and two point eight five million is seven hundred eighty thousand rands. Right, and if you go and add up all of your interest in this amortization table, it gives you seven hundred eighty thousand rands. So just so you can see where it all comes from. Okay, so it includes finance charges. Does the aggregate of the amounts payable, and what they're referring to there is this 2850, does that amount exceed the cash value of the supply? And we know it does, because the cash value is 2,070,000, and we're paying 2.85 million. Right, and again, guys, remember this. What I'm going through here is straight from the VAT Act, and this is just a little bit of revision. And then the purchaser either needs to become uh, or does not become the owner of the goods merely by virtue of the delivery to, um, to him, or the seller is entitled to return of those goods if the purchaser fails to comply with any terms of the agreement. So, what this basically says is it says, let's just go and use this as an example. So A Limited sells to X Limited. So they say, and then A Limited, the goods are delivered to X Limited when? Let me just show you. It is delivered, delivered to X Limited on the 1st of October, as we've seen here. Right. Now, it's delivered on the 1st of October, but they have to pay over a period of three years. So when does it become the property of the buyer? It's actually only after the first three years. So they say here, it either needs to be that the purchaser does not become the owner of the goods, just because it's been delivered to them, or the requirement must be that if the buyer doesn't pay, the seller can take it back. Those are requirements of the suspensive sale agreement. So in this case, it is a suspensive sale agreement. Then, if we look at the seller and the buyer, so first B and C, the seller. For the seller, what are the VAT implications for A Limited, and what is the taxable income for A Limited for 20x7, 20x8, and 20x9? So the VAT implications, first of all, is because this is an installment credit agreement, the value of the VAT is calculated on the cash value, that's the, the value rule, and it's on the early of delivery of payment. So that's a very simple, guys. It means that the VAT will be the 270,000 rands in total, which is the amount that it was sold for. The cash cost, it was sold for 1.8 million, so the VAT is 270,000. It's then the earlier of payment or delivery. Delivery is on the 1st of October 20x6. The first payment is the 1st of October 20x7. So when do we account for it? 1st of October 20x6. What are the income tax implications? So for the income tax implications, C, so we're now looking at part C here. What are the income tax implications? The seller is treated as if he disposed of the asset and the finest charges are gross income. Okay, so let's go and see. So in this case, this machine, remember, it was originally bought and used, so we calculated normal recoupment, normal CGT on it. This is all normal. This is when the buyer, remember the buyer in this question originally bought the asset, used it, and now I'm sa is selling it. Right, so it's a normal disposal. Then it's now gone. Then the interest, that's 369, 8 to 70, that gets recognized. And I've just included this here to remind you, section 10 on I should be considered the interest exemption, but this is not a natural person. What happens in the year 20x8? Only the interest is received, and 20x9, same thing, interest. You don't look at the 950,000 rands that is received every month because those are not lease payments, and though in this case, it's payment of an outstanding debt. You, the buyer sold it on credit. It's paying off that amount. And as we know, you account for the transaction 
at the earlier of receipt or accrual, basically, for income tax purposes. As normal rules still apply. The disposal takes place when the asset is disposed of, like we know. So, buyer, what are the VAT implications? The same as for the seller, count for in the cash value, the input tax, so input tax of 270000 and an earlier of payment or delivery. Same rule. What are the taxable income implications? Right, so the tax implications, the buyer is the owner of the asset, so it can claim capital allowances on the asset, and then the finance charges or deductions. So what I want you to see is this asset was sold for 1.8 million rands, that's the capital amount X VAT. So that is what we can claim our allowance on. Why is it times 20% for Section 12C? Because this is a second-hand machine. So there are our allowances. And these amounts over here are the finance charges. So as you can see, guys, it's really quite simple. The most important things here for you, where you will score most of your marks, it's calculating these recoupments and CGT, which as you can see, the interest is very easy. It makes a lot of sense also. Obviously, it's interest fine. If I sell an asset to you and you pay me an amount of interest, it's income for me. And for in the same way, it is a expense for you. So that's it for leases and for suspensive sales.